Good evening and welcome back to another episode of The Longing, where we are going to be continuing to read Thus Spoke Zarathustra, Volume 2. So, let's crack on. <clears throat> Amazing is the poverty of my ribs, thus hath spoken many a present-day man. Yea, ye are laughable unto me, ye present-day men and especially when ye marvel at yourselves. And woe unto me if I could not laugh at your marvelling, and had to swallow all that is repugnant in your platters. As it is, however, I will make lighter of you, since I have to carry what is heavy, and what matter if beetles and maybugs also alight on my load. Verily it shall not on that account become heavier to me, and not from you, ye present-day men, shall my great weariness arise. Ah! Whither shall I now ascend with my longing? From all mountains do I look out for fatherlands and motherlands. But a home have I found nowhere, unsettled am I in all cities, and decamping at all gates. Alien to me and a mockery are the present-day men, to whom of late my heart impelled me, and exiled am, am I from fatherlands and motherlands. Thus do I love only my children's land, the undiscovered in the remotest sea. For it do I bid my sails search and search. Unto my children will I make amends for being the child of my fathers, and unto all the future for this present day. Thus spake Zarathustra. 37. Immaculate Perception When yester-eve the moon arose, then did I fancy it about to bear a son. So broad and teeming did it lie on the horizon. But it was a liar with its pregnancy, and sooner will I believe in the man in the moon than in the woman. To be sure, little of a man is he also, that timid night reveller. Verily, with a bad conscience doth he stalk over the roofs. For he is covetous and jealous, the monk in the moon, covetous of the earth and all the joys of lovers. Nay, I like him not, that tomcat on the roofs. Hateful unto me are all that slink around half-closed windows. Piously and silently doth he stalk along on the star carpets. But I like no light treading human feet, on wh which not even a spur jingleth. Every honest one's step speaketh, the cat, however, stealeth along over the ground. Lo, cat-like doth the moon come along, and dishonestly. This parable speak I unto you, sentimental dissemblers, unto you, the pure discerners. You do, I, call covetous ones. Also ye love the earth, and the earthly. I have divined you well, but shame is in your love, and a bad conscience, ye are like the moon. To despise the earthly hath your spirit been persuaded, but not your bowels. These, however, are the strongest in you. And now is your spirit ashamed to be at the service of your bowels, and goeth by ways and lying ways to escape its own shame. That would be the highest thing for me, so saith your lying spirit unto itself, to gaze upon life without desire, and not like the dog with hanging out tongue, to be happy in gazing, with dead will, free from grip, from the grip and greed of selfishness, cold and ashy grey all over, but with intoxicated moon eyes. That would be the dearest thing to me, thus doth the seduced one seduce himself, to love the earth as the moon loveth it, and with the eye only to feel its beauty. And this do I call immaculate perception of all things. To want nothing else from them, but to be allowed to lie before them as a mirror with a hundred facets. O ye sentimental dis dissemblers, ye covetous ones, ye lack innocence in your desire, and now do ye defame desiring on that account. Verily not as creators, as procreators, or as jubilators do ye love the earth. Where is innocence? Where there is will to procreation? And he who seeketh to create beyond himself hath for me the purest will. Where is beauty? Where I must will with my whole will, where I will love and perish, 
that an image may not remain merely an image. Loving and perishing, these have rhymed from eternity. Will to love, that is to be ready also for death. Thus do I speak unto you, cowards. But now doth your emasculated ogling profess to be contemplation, and that which can be examined with cowardly eyes is to be cherish, uh, to be christened beautiful, O ye violators of noble names. But it shall be your curse, ye immaculate ones, ye pure discerners, that ye shall never bring forth, even though ye lie broad and teeming on the horizon. Verily, ye fill your mouth with noble words, and we are to believe that your heart overfloweth, ye co cozeners. But my words are poor, contemptible, stammering words. Gladly do I pick up what falleth from the table at your repasts. Yet still can I say therewith the truth to dissemblers. Yea, my fishbones, shells, and prickly leaves shall tickle the noses of dissemblers. Bad air is always about you and your repasts. Your levitious thoughts, your lies and secrets are indeed in the air. Dare only to believe in yourselves, in yourselves and in your inward parts. He who doth not believe in, in himself always lieth. A God's mask have ye hung in front of you, ye pure ones. Into a God's mask hath your execrable... I don't know that word. Execrable coiling snake crawled. Verily ye deceive ye contemplative ones. Even Zarathustra was once the dupe of your godlike exterior. He did not divine the serpent's coil with which it was stuffed. A god's soul, I once thought I saw playing in your games, ye pure discerners. No better arts did I once dream than your arts. Serpent's filth and evil odour, the distance concealed from me, and that a lizard's craft prowled thereabouts levicious, lasciviously, but I came nigh unto you, then came to me the day, and now cometh it to you. At an end is the moon's love affair. See there, surprised and pale doth it stand before the rosy dawn. For already she cometh, the glowing one, her love to the earth cometh. Innocence and creative desire is all solar love. See there, how she cometh impatiently over the sea. Do ye not feel the thirst and the hot breath of her love? At the sea would she shuck, and drink its depths to her height. Now riseth the desire of the sea with its thousand breasts. Kissed and sucked would it be by the thirst of the sun. Vapour would it become, and height and path of light and light itself. Verily like the sun do I love life and all deep seas. And this meaneth to me knowledge. All that is deep shall ascend to my height. Thus spake Zarathustra. And with that we can, we're going to actually end. I know we're one short of the daily ten, but that's quite a nice end to the chapter, so uh, we're just going to end it there and we are going to roll back time once again with the blue fire. <clears throat> Just so, since we've got a quite a, a nice stopping point, I suppose, um, gives us time to do, actually do this rollback to gain more more time without having to do it a bit later on. I mean, I know we've got plenty of days left to do it, but that's not the point. If we if we don't have to do it later, and we've got the time now, we might as well do it now. So, yes, we're going to do it now. We won't make it to the maximum threshold that we seem to be able to reach, which is about 36 days, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. We won't make it to that one just because I'm not fast enough at the clicking today. Um, we're not going to be far off. We're going to be fairly close, actually. Yeah, there we go. We can't get any further back than that. It's, it's uh, interesting, that. That that is the limit. Anyway, <clears throat> well, 
that was quite a nice uh, time timing of the end of that so I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me today I hope you all have a wonderful morning evening afternoon or night no matter what time of day it is I hope you all have a wonderful one of it and as always we will be back tomorrow for more of the longing goodbye <laughs>